go to the book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. I'm going to start reading in verse 13 through verse 16. Amen. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. I want to begin reading at verse 13 through verse 16. And here we have Jesus Christ, the Son of God, making a statement. He said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now let me go back up to verse 13 and I'm reading down to verse 16. It says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is this for good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Then he goes on to say in verse 14, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Yeah. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works yeah. and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Father, we thank you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ for the word of truth that is about to go forth. May the Spirit of God enlighten us, open up our understanding that we may understand Scripture. May somebody be drawn to the cross of Christ. May someone be challenged to go higher. May someone be convicted of their sin. May somebody, amen, desire to go deeper into the things of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give God praise. Somebody say amen. 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 Praise God. Again, we're coming out of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. And I want to deal, praise God, with the subject, the light of the world. Praise God. The light of the world. Now, Jesus said in verse 14 through verse 16, and I know we started up in verse 13, but I want to deal with verse 14 through 16. Where Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Now, he was speaking to his disciples. He was not speaking to sinners. He was talking to his disciples, them who had been converted into the faith. Hello, somebody. He said, you are the light of the world. Now, I want everybody to understand that when you get saved, the scripture says, you are the light of the world. Now, understand that you are not the light. Well, somebody said, it just said, we are the light of the world. Well, the Bible also teaches us that with all thy getting, give understanding. When Jesus said, you are the light of the world, he was not telling them that they are that actual light. Right. Come on. Amen. Uh, the Bible teaches us over in the Gospel of John, and I believe it's verse or chapter 8, the Gospel of John, chapter 8. Listen to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. John, chapter 8. And I want to begin reading here at verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Praise God. So we understand by scripture that Jesus is the light of the world. And when we possess Jesus Christ within our being, then we possess that light. Amen. We possess that light. Now let's look at something that John the Baptist said in John chapter 1. The gospel of John chapter 1. Praise God. Let's look at this. I'm going to start in verse 1, and I'm going to read down a few a particular verses of Scripture. Watch this. 
The Gospel of John, chapter 1, beginning in verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Amen. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. Amen. That all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Amen. Praise God. Now when you have Jesus Christ in your life, when you possess the gift of the Holy Ghost, you have the light. Come on somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Understand that we are not that light, but we bear witness of the light. Praise God. Amen. And when Jesus lives on the inside of you, then the Bible says that Beginning at verse 5. 
The text reads, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Look at that. Come on somebody. I come to tell you that when you are walking in darkness, you're not walking in the spirit. Come on. Because in God there is no darkness. Come on. First John chapter 3, the text says that in Christ there was no sin. Come on. Understanding, you gotta get your mind. 
places. I know your flesh gonna fight you, but that's why you got to learn to make warfare with your own flesh. Come on, somebody. I know it ain't gonna feel good. It ain't supposed to praise God. God calls us to put the flesh to death because if you don't kill the flesh, the flesh gonna show no kill you. So somebody got to die. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah! 
amen, you will compromise your soul. You will reject Jesus Christ just to save your flesh, just for a little bit longer. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That's why everybody got to sell out. You got to sell out, praise God. I didn't say sell Jesus out. You got to sell out completely. Come on, somebody. You got to get to a place in your life that you're not for rent. Of his glory. Did you see that? Yeah. He said, They're what? 
in. They celebrated. They paraded as if it's a grand celebration. That's why when you see people coming out today, everybody begin to celebrate. The heterosexuals begin to celebrate. Oh, I think it's wonderful. Praise God. Hallelujah. You got basketball players coming out. Football players coming out. Actors and actresses coming out. Some of everybody coming out. Praise God. And they ain't got no shame. Look at all the hip hoppers. The rappers and the rock and rollers. That you sit and listen to. And they sodomites. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. And yeah, we got sodomites in the church too. They may be in the church. But they ain't baptized. So they ain't really a part of the church that Jesus said, I will build my church. See, just because folks are in, they come to church, don't mean they in the church. And Satan has used that, that, that parallel to cause the unbelieving world to point the finger at the church and say, see, look what the people in the church are doing. And most of them people that's in the church doing what they're doing ain't even a part of the church. They're not even a part of the born again church. The baptized church. The blood bought church. They just somebody who attend the church. Amen. And Satan has used that to his advantage to make Jesus look bad in the eyes of the unbelieving world. You understand? That's why a lot of people put their mouth on the church. See, look what they're doing in the church. Praise God. But they may be doing that in the church, but they ain't a part of the church. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The Bible says, we just read it. In 1 John chapter 1, he said, walk in the light as he is in the light. Amen. If any man say he had fellowship with God and he walks in darkness, he's a liar. And the truth is not in him. See, they ain't in the church. They just go to a building that's labeled a church. But they ain't been born of the spirit, praise God. There's a difference. Hello. Let me finish reading this. In verse 9, he said, the show of their countenance does witness against them, and they declare their sin as silent. Look at this darkness. I want you to know what you're reading. You're reading darkness. You're seeing darkness. See, this is what Satan dwells in. And he dwells in the dark. That's why Jesus Christ, the Son of God, called him the Prince of Darkness. Praise God. Hallelujah. He said, the show of their countenance does witness against them, and they declare They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. See that? There's a judgment coming. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. They were rewarded evil unto themselves. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. Amen. Then it says in verse 10, Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doing. But woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him. For the reward of his hand shall be given him. Praise God. Am I making sense? Does that make sense? Praise God. Hallelujah. Now what did I just read? Amen. Look at the darkness. Gross darkness. And it's getting worse by the day. We got preachers in the poop pit. Come on somebody. Sleeping with all the women in the church. And infecting them with AIDS. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's infinite. People get all these pictures on their phone. Look at the look at the the porno industry. The porno industry is more than buying videos. Praise God. The porno industry is more, amen, than amen. You pass them from phone to phone. Come on. Amen. You understand. But everybody that's a fornicator, you are a porno king and a porno queen. Because I told you the Greek word for pornography, the Greek word for fornication is porne. It's where we get the word pornography. So fornication by itself is pornography. And ain't nobody got to be videotaping you either. Come on. You in pornography.
Noah was a just man and perfect in this generation. And Noah walked with God. Amen. While Noah was walking with God, the whole world lied in wickedness. Yeah. Yeah. And even though we're living in a wicked society, I mean, darkness has come to the earth and gross darkness, the people. This is what you got to consider. In Isaiah chapter 60, though we are living in a society as such, our response should not be do what everybody else is doing. Fitting in with the crowd. Come on. Amen. So when you are God, you don't fit in. That's right. When you are God, praise his holy name, they don't even want you around. Huh? But then we have some bold devils that will try to invite you into their wickedness, yeah. hoping that you stumble and fall, praise God. And then when you do, now they say, oh, I thought you were supposed to be a Christian. Yeah. You got to watch the devil. Amen. Come on. Amen. But even though we're living in a dark world and gross darkness has covered the people, Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 said, Arise and shine. Amen. For thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Verse 3. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. This is why Jesus teaches us in Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. He said, Let your light so shine. Yes. Why? That others might see. What do this wicked world need to see? Come on, somebody. They need to see the light. They decided to leave you the shadow of death saw a great light. And they sprang up and came to the light. Come on. This is what we need to see that do. We need that light burning in the church. You need that light burning in your home. We need that light burning in your child. We need that light burning in the school system, praise God. We need the light of the world to manifest through the children of God in our society. Amen. You're not to cave in and try to do what everybody else is doing because you don't want to be left out. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so many people are succumbing to the pressure. Because they don't want to be the only one. They feel weird if I'm the only one not doing what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. They feel shame. They feel embarrassed if I'm not doing what everybody else is doing. If I'm not doing what my friends are doing. And I told you, we call anybody our friend today. They ain't been proven or anything, but yet we declare that they are our friend. Then when they break your heart, praise God. Amen. Then when they turn their back on you, uh, all of a sudden, they're not your friend anymore. Come on. My Bible says that a friend loveth it all the time. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise God. He said, arise and shine. For the light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen up. He said, let your light so shine. Come on. Amen. What do you mean, let your light so shine? People, let me tell you something. The Bible says that we're to be holy, even as he is holy. Even be in all manner of holy conversation. Are you getting me? Do we, do we engage in holy converse, conversation? Amen. Come on. I know we have some scuffles every now and then. I know husbands and wife, praise God, may have to deal with an issue, praise God. Come on, somebody. But folks, what you got to understand, that we got to let our light shine. And let your light shine, amen, is, amen, sinuates, living a holy life. Come on, walking in the spirit, doing the will of God. You understand here? You can't succumb to the flesh. You can't succumb to the ungodliness of this world. Because Satan the devil come to step out your life. Amen. Many today have what you call a flickering light. 
a flickering, a flickering light simulates that your light is on the way out. <laughs> yep. okay. He said, let your light so shine. Amen. See, Jesus is that light. If that light don't shine, this flesh got to be crucified. We got to decrease so he can increase. And that's why we can't see Jesus in a lot of people's lives that profess the name of Jesus. Because they won't die to the flesh. That flesh will keep anybody from seeing God in your life if he is actually in your life. That's why you have to die to that flesh. Come on. Because that flesh will overshadow the spirit of God in your life if you actually possess it within your heart. Are you listening to me? Praise God. He said, let your light so shine that others might see. Hmm? How many know the world is looking at the church? Amen. And we know that a lot of people in the world look at the church because they want to bad mouth the church because they want to give that, they want to give themselves a good excuse for the reason why I don't go to church. Yeah. Praise God. No, you don't go to church because uh, you're a sinner. You love your sin. Praise God. You understand? Amen. You got a scripture for that, Pastor Walker? Absolutely. In the Gospel of John, chapter 3, I'm going to read that to you. Praise God, because there is no excuse for anybody. You can't blame anybody. You got to blame yourself, praise God. Amen. The scripture teaches us in the gospel of John chapter 3. Let's look at this, praise God. Amen. Let me start at verse let me start at verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. Verse 19. Look at that. Amen. 
that they may see your good works. How many know we're not saved by works? Amen. But when you get saved, the Bible says we're saved to do good works. Shouldn't born again believers be doing good works? We don't do good works to get saved. We do good works because we are saved. Come on, somebody. Praise God. Are you listening to me? I'm not talking about you allowing people to use you. When you see people trying to use you, the Bible says pray for them. They despitefully use you and persecute you. Praise God. The people seem to think because you're a Christian, they, you're supposed to do whatever they want you to do for them. And if you do it, oh, you're a real Christian. But if you don't, well, I see them people, they, they, they don't know God. I've heard people say these things. They want to try to use the church for their own selfish gain. Come on. Amen. You understand? Amen. Praise God. Amen. He said, let your light so shine before men, right? Amen. That others may see your what? Good that others may see your what? Good that others may see your what? Good that others may see your good works. Right? Amen. 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 And they too would want to glorify the Father. And this is what the world needs to see. Hmm? Amen. This is what the world needs to see. They need to see Jesus. Amen. They need to see his kindness, his gentleness, his love, his joy, his peace. Yes. Come on. Amen. They need to see it. They need to see his compassion. How are they going to see it? Through them that are called by his name. Come on. Amen. Y'all not, not talking to me. Amen. 